Ladies and gentlemen, live from South Africa, this is Morning Shot, and today we have a very, very sad video, but an inevitable video, because, my friends, South Africa has completely and utterly collapsed. And with me in studio, of course, is Byron, the other presenter on this channel. Hello, Byron. Hello, Ramon, and uh, I actually disagree. I don't think South Africa has collapsed. I think South Africa has been collapsing for the last 25 years. By saying that South Africa has collapsed makes it sound like it is a sudden event. And I don't believe it is a sudden event. It's an inevitable event given the trajectory that we have been on for some time. I fully agree, but this was clickbait. So anyway, thanks for ruining that, Byron. Um, so I fully agree with you in terms of the trends of collapse, right? South Africa has not completely collapsed, but if we look at the trends, it is certainly on its way. And it has been 30 years in the making of that. We can certainly agree. More than half of the sewage works in this country don't really work. Millions of kilometers of piping for water are broken. The electrical grid, well, I mean, it's non-existent. We have 12 hours of blackouts most days of the week, sometimes eight if they're feeling generous. All in all, South Africa is collapsing to such a degree that it's going to take, I don't know, democracy from America or a huge bailout from the World Bank to actually save it in its current form. So for those who might be watching from overseas, we're going to talk about this in a material way. And Byron, if you had to basically blame a single thing on the collapsing nature of South Africa, what would you say that is? Everybody wants me to say A and C, right? But actually it's more complicated than A and C and is more complicated than A and C policy. If I were to say, what's the single thing that has collapsed South Africa, I'd say Marxism. Because effectively what we've had is we've had stupid people at the helm of the country trying to run it. But you know, these are people that have never had a job. They've never created anything in their life. And it's kind of like you're getting people that have never run a business and never created anything to run the place. And then then wondering to yourself, why is it that they've never created and run anything in the country? Well, because they weren't experienced at running it. These individuals then went and employed their own friends and family through K to deployment. Those friends and family through K to deployment didn't know how to create or run anything either. So this has created what we can only describe down as the top down decay that we are seeing in South Africa. And I fully agree with you. And the results of Marxist doctrine are as such one of the top five most violent countries in the world. We have three service delivery protest every single day so over a thousand protests a year in this particular country i have mentioned the blackouts as well the roads are collapsing all around us the crime rate is out of control the highest unemployment rate the world has ever known and all in all it is a country that is basically just waiting to become a failed state and that is all absolutely true but the narrative around the collapse of south africa has also been brewing that there is a civil war coming all of these conditions are creating the essential elements for a civil war, which I fundamentally disagree with. We don't have any conditions available for a civil war. I don't think that there's going to be a civil war because for there to be a civil war, we would have to have a sudden unexpected jolt or shock to the system. Nothing here is sudden or unexpected. All of this is just a Let's call it a managed decline because we have seen the degradation within society, especially South African society for some time. So I don't think that the conditions, the decaying that we're seeing is sudden and unexpected such that people are like shocked into action because revolutions are done through shocks to the system. There's no shock here. This has been in the making for 25 years. And I fully agree with you. So, you know, the conditions for civil war is not an exact science, but basically broadly, you need about three different things, right? You need to have a prior conflict, which we don't really have in South Africa. We've had segregation under apartheid, but that ended 30 years ago. But number two, we need to have a national identity identified amongst race and class. And that does exist to some extent, but class is a far more important factor than race. You've got very rich black people. You've got a very strong black middle class and a lot of black people who are very very poor same applies to the white population same applies to the indian population there's no solidarity amongst races and class for the most part and then most importantly you need a shift from tribalism to sectarianism tribalism does exist in south africa but people aren't getting killed over it we're a nation of 12 distinct ethnic groups those groups live rather peacefully together and it's certainly not going towards sectarianism at all so under those three conditions there's just no way in hell there will be a civil war in south africa there will be civil unrest there will be protests there might you know be another sort of july riots in kwazulu natal from 2021 but that does not make it a civil war yeah 
I would agree with that entirely. And I think a lot of people have been harping on the civil war problem now since 94. When everything had ended and obviously segregation had ended and the race-based laws were gone. I remember people then talking about the civil war. I remember people talking about in the 2000s when we had BEE. I remember hearing it when we had Zuma come into power. I remember hearing it when the EFF was formed. We've heard about civil wars many, many times. And it's arguable if you were ever to say that the circumstances for civil war were at their apex. It isn't today. It was years ago. And it didn't happen because there wasn't the will from the people. The people didn't want it. Because the reality is that the majority of individuals do not want a civil war. And we keep seeing the surveys from South Africans over and over and over again. The average South African, be it of any race, agrees on eight out of 10 things. They all agree that they want a strong economy. They all agree that they want to educate their children properly. They all agree that they want a job. They all agree that they want a future in this country. Those are not the conditions for a civil war. So yes, South Africa is collapsing, but a civil war is certainly not the consequence of that particular collapse. The collapse has been in effect for 30 years. People are actually used to it. I know that's very difficult to understand coming from America or Britain or Australia, but those are the real facts on the ground. We are used to this collapse, but the collapse is not bad news. This channel is actually very bullish on the collapse of South Africa because my friends, when you have a collapsing state, you have the space and time to create the alternatives. And there are many, many groups in South Africa who have been spending decades building alternatives to the state infrastructure, state education, state healthcare, state universities, and the list goes on. There's more security guards than police officers. There are more private universities that are doing very well compared to the public universities. And all in all, South Africa, as we keep saying, is going to be a pioneering stateless society based on an enclave system. And we said this years ago, and it still is fact today. We have already started to allow the alternatives. In other words, the creation of private enterprise, the libertarian state, all the things that we talk about on this channel on a daily basis. South Africa is used to the degradation and it is used to seeing its services disrupted. Western nations are not. If they experienced what we experienced, there would be civil war because there would be the sudden unexpected jolt to their collective psyche. Going somewhere else does not mean that you will be saved the decline. The decline will still occur. So in that respect, South Africa is better for its decay than anywhere else. We will feel it less in our country because the decline has been for longer and it's been slower and we've been allowed to adjust to it. Very much so, because whether the collapse happens or not, the alternatives are being built as we speak. And those alternatives can only be built here in South Africa. In any other country, they would be illegal. Well, Franz Cronier himself told us during an interview that we recently had with him, you and I would both be in prison if we lived in a different country, just because of the, the, the approach that we take on things. And at the end of the day, despite being great listed, despite having no electricity, despite everything else, the South African stock economy still holds pretty strong and the South African rand is still holding its value. In any other situation, we all hear about how South Africa would be a Venezuela and a Zimbabwe by now. But it is not. And the reason for that is because the investors, the investors in the country understand something that very few people do on the ground floor. And that is the ability to create a self-sustained enterprise where you can do stuff without the interference of the government. Not because the government doesn't want to be involved, but because it's incapable of being involved is a possibility in South Africa. Those possibilities do not exist in the United States. They do not exist in Australia and they do not exist in the, U in the UK. The ability to live your life completely off grid without government say so, not because they leave you alone and they choose to, but because the alternative is not possible. They do not have the resources to police you. That is a state that most people are still seeing as a pioneer state as a potential opportunity for investment, as a potential opportunity for growth. And I know that anybody listening to that will find this unfathomable. They will not understand how that's possible. But the reality is it is, and we're living it. Indeed. And in America, the dissident right wants to sort of separate themselves from the state. They want to, you know, buy, buy a farm and live on the farm alone and become Mormon and all the rest of it. You can do it in America, but then you get waco right? You can do it in America, but then you get Ruby Ridge. You can do that in South Africa and you're going to live far more peacefully than any other place on earth. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you really enjoyed the video, please do support us. Everything is linked down below. Listen to our podcast as well, Morning Shot Uncut, also linked below. And of course, if you really love the channel, why not hit that subscribe button? Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.